Okay. Thank you, Sharon. My name is Michael Miller. I do have a New York accent because I'm from Brooklyn. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Absolutely. I grew up in Brooklyn in uh, the late 40s, early 50s. I lived in uh, uh, Crown Heights, which is the real seat of Hasidic uh, Judaism with Rabbi uh, Schmerson. And uh, I uh, grew up in an apartment building with my sister, who's four years older than me, and my parents, Minnie and Larry Miller, who have uh, unfortunately passed on. Um, growing up in Brooklyn was a, uh, a real treat. I mean, it really made me what I became, made me a stronger person, made me, uh, uh, made me a real street person and able to understand the ways of life. I grew up virtually in the shadow of Evans Field where uh, the Dodgers played. Uh, when we were kids, we used to hang out on Bedford Avenue waiting for the balls to come over the uh, right field uh, fence. And uh, I saw Sandy Koufax and uh, uh, Jackie Robinson, Duke Snyder, Gil Hodges, all the real, uh, the real old Brooklyn Dodgers. Um, my sister currently lives in uh, California. She's going to be 75 years old, and uh, I'm very close to her. Uh, we grew up in an apartment building. I grew up actually in a one-bedroom apartment. I shared the bedroom with my sister, and my parents slept on a Castro convertible that they pulled out each night. Um, we didn't have a car, we used public transportation. Uh, I didn't know we had no money, but we probably didn't. But, you know, we grew up, um, everybody watched everybody else back then. All the, uh, there were hundreds and hundreds of kids. We grew up in all these big apartment buildings and everybody would hang out uh, at the candy store on the corner and uh, really have a good time. I had a great, great childhood. Um, we go, you know, back then, the streets were a lot safer than I guess they are today. We'd get on the train and go down to Coney Island when we were nine years old, or go over to Prospect Park, or, you know, the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens. Uh, We'd actually go into Manhattan and go to the uh, arcade games on 42nd Street. And it was really, really a great time to grow up back then. Um, I went to high school in Brooklyn, of course, because all high schools were neighborhood high schools. And I, uh, I went to two high schools. I first started at a high school called Wingate, where uh, Actually, uh, the only famous person I found, I went online, that graduated from Wingate was uh, Barbara Boxer, the current senator from uh, uh, California. But I finished up at probably the most famous high school in all of Brooklyn, or possibly all of New York. I went to Erasmus. Yeah. Yeah. I lived around there. I didn't go to Erasmus, but I lived around there. Did you? Um, I went when Barbara Streisand was just yeah. graduating from Erasmus. Mm -hmm. Neil Diamond had gone there. Uh, Jay Black from Jay and the Americans. Uh, Billy Cunningham, who played in the uh, NBA for the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, it was really, really a treat to go to Erasmus. I had uh, one friend who did become famous. Uh, uh, Gabe Kaplan, who became a uh, TV uh, personality on the show Welcome Back, Cotter. And um, he and I were really good friends. We, um, we used to play poker a lot. And Gabe is currently, uh, or still is, a very uh, uh, proficient and professional poker player. That's because I taught him how to play. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I got out of high school, I was not a very good student. And uh, I, th 
think my mother was sometimes in school more than I was. <laughs> in the principal's um, office. <laughs> what I wanted to do was to go to Aqueduct Racetrack and Belmont and play pool and uh, play poker. And um, when I was in the third grade, my parents bought a uh, business in Manhattan. They bought what today would be a um, uh, Hallmark store, you know, like the little greeting card store. So they worked uh, seven days a week and, um, you know, from all day and, you know, they get home at eight, nine o'clock at night. So my sister really uh, raised me and uh, she resents it to this day. And, uh, <laughs> but that's, that's life in the big city. So I didn't do, I really did not do very well in school. And uh, when I got out of high school, um, my parents did not have the money to send me to a uh, pay college, and I did not have the marks to go to a free college. So I had an alternative, and that was either join the service or be drafted, because back then you were drafted. And that was uh, uh, 1962. And um, I joined the Air Force. I did not stay in the Air Force very long. I was in an accident and uh, I was in probably about 14 months. And, but I did do my military service, and uh, when I got back from, uh, uh, back to Brooklyn, I really sat down with myself and said, you know, you better shape up or, you know, you're gonna go the way of some of these really bad kids in the neighborhood who were getting into trouble with drugs and, uh, doing things that uh, they really should not be doing. So I enrolled in uh, Brooklyn College at night. I got a job as uh, uh, in an insurance brokerage in Manhattan uh, on uh, Pine Street, right next to Wall Street. And uh, my, my claim to fame was I was extremely good in mathematics. I could do things in my head. I didn't need paper. Of course, there weren't calculators back then. Um, and I got a job as a, in a uh, uh, clerk in what was called the actuarial department of an, ins an insurance, um, insurance brokerage called Marsha McLennan, which even to today is the largest insurance brokerage in the world. And um, I started going to school at night. Uh, I wound up um, uh, going at night for 11 years and uh, by the time I was uh, finished I had two children, I was married, I got married in 1967, I was like 21 years old, but that's what you did back then. Uh, of course I married a Jewish school teacher, that's what you did back then. Um, and. Uh, I, uh, I, I started on the, what I would say, the train of, uh, uh, of my career. And I started working very, very hard. I never said no. And um, uh, I started working for some major corporations. And the first one being in 1969, I worked for uh, worked in Manhattan for American Machine and Foundry, AMF, the old bowling company. And uh, I, I uh, specialized in the benefit fields as, uh, as, a, as, a, as an actuary. I wasn't a full actuary, but I did pass a few actuarial exams. And uh, uh, back then, you know, there was medical and there was life insurance and people had pensions and I became an expert in, uh, in the pension field. And um, what happened was I saw on the horizon that the government was starting to get involved in pensions via a new law that they were getting ready to pass called ERISA. And for corporations, the, uh, the benefits guy or the pension guy used to just be somebody they didn't know what to do with. And, he was 62 years old, so they'd make him the pension guy until he was uh, eligible to retire. But with the new law coming into focus, uh, corporations were going to need professional pension people. 
and uh, I decided that that's what I was going to do. I was going to become a, uh, an expert in the area of pensions and other employee benefits that corporations were giving people in order to attract and retain them. And uh, my first job was with, uh, with AMF. And uh, AMF was located on Madison Avenue and 39th Street in Manhattan. And, you know, I would take the train from, uh, uh, from Brooklyn. I got married in 67. This was 1969. I lived in uh, Sheepshead Bay in, in Brooklyn. You know, everybody, we just stayed where we were. People didn't uh, move around that much. <coughs> but in, 19, in 1971, AMF actually moved out of New York City and moved up to White Plains. And they offered me the opportunity to move up. Uh, and I bought a house in Westchester. It was my first house. And uh, at that time, I had one child. I had a, my first child was born in 1971. And uh, I moved up to Westchester, and I stayed with AMF for a few more years. I moved on to another company over in Connecticut, in Greenwich, Connecticut, called Microdots. And again, in the benefits area. And Microdot was uh, uh, a company involved in the aircraft and automotive business. And um, uh, they wound up getting taken over. Um, and I wound up in Detroit. That was my next stop on the train. Uh, by that time, I had two children. Um, my second daughter, uh, Mandy, was born in 1973 in Westchester in a place called Mount Kisco, for those of you who know Westchester. Um, and uh, I moved to Detroit. I did not like the job anymore, and uh, uh, I started looking around for another job, again, staying in the same field, and I wound up taking a job with a pharmaceutical company in Chicago by the name of G.D. Searle. And G.D. Searle, uh, this was 1977, and G.D. Searle was actually being run by um, a former Washington insider by the name of Don Rumsfeld. And Rumsfeld was Nixon's uh, Secretary of Defense. He had been a congressman. He ran NATO. He was Jerry Ford's uh, White House Chief of Staff. And when Jerry Ford lost to uh, Jimmy Carter in 1976, Rumsfeld became the uh, CEO of G.D. Searle. And Rumsfeld liked me personally, and he said, you know what? I'm going to take you out of that job you're in, and you're going to be my assistant. So that's pretty cool. And um, I worked for Don Rumsfeld for about two and a half years. And I traveled the world with him. And he really taught me how to handle myself uh, professionally. And uh, he taught me how to negotiate, which uh, as I go further, you'll hear that that's really where I've earned my stripes in my career as a negotiator. Negotiating with unions, uh, buying and selling companies, negotiating with uh, uh, vendors. And uh, after I left Rumsfeld, I moved to Columbus, Ohio. And I took a job with Borg, Elsie the Cow. And uh, I wound up staying with Borden for 16 years. I wound up living all over the world with Borden. Um, I started with Borden uh, in 1979 in Columbus, Ohio. And um, in 1985, I divorced my first wife and I met Susan in London on a, uh, on a business trip. And Susan had never been to America. I convinced her to come to Ohio, and I said there were big mountains there, and lots to see. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going with this mountain. <laughs> so, Susan came to Ohio in 1985. We got married in 1986, and um, I was really 
doing extremely well in my career with Borden. Borden was a very large company. They were a Fortune 100 company with you know 80,000 employees all over the world, and I was traveling. I was traveling quite a bit. In fact, that there were years where I traveled 200 days a year, and I was traveling internationally, and I was helping them buy companies and sell companies with my expertise in the employee benefits area at this, at, and, and, comp and employee compensation. Um, over the years, I have now visited 89 countries. We've, uh, we lived in Columbus, Ohio, and in 1988, unfortunately, I got very, very sick and had a heart attack. Uh, wound up having uh, bypass surgery, and while I wanted to stay with Borden, I couldn't stay in the current job. I needed to, to just change what I was doing, and Borden offered me the opportunity to move to London, England. Uh, Susan was from London, and of course I came home and I said, you know, I got great news, we're going to London, and uh, she said, I don't want to go. I'm American, I want to stay in America. But um, we did go to London, and we stayed in London for uh, four years, from 1989 to 1993. And I traveled most of that time. Um, I traveled upwards of 200 days a year, and I'd be in Brazil one week, and next week I'm in Australia, and I'm in China, and I'm in uh, uh, Japan, and. Uh, all over Europe, and uh, uh, it was really, really a difficult um, job, but it was a very fulfilling job. In 19, uh, and uh, Susan had a child from her first marriage, Kyle, and Kyle was with us over in England, and um, in 1983, we got there in 89, in 93, uh, Borden said, uh, the rules have changed and we want you to go and uh, open an office for us in Bombay, India. So I rolled my eyes, but I never said no. I always said yes. And I said, okay, I'll go to Bombay. Told Susan about it. And she was kind of excited because she likes Indian food. So. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, being a, really a hardship assignment, we would get home leave. A year, and you know, uh, it, it was really, uh, it was really going to be an adventure. We thought, and uh, I went there, and I was setting everything up. And at the very last minute, they said, "We we've changed our mind. You got to go to China. We want you to go live in China." And uh, I said, "Where?" And they said, uh, "All the way northeast of Beijing, up by Siberia." So oh, good. <laughs> yeah. So I went up there, and it was uh, it was cold all the time. It was just brutal up there. But uh, Borden had decided they were going to um, get into the milk powder business in China, and they needed to build a plant. And China was, uh, you know, very uh, still very. Um, communist and not really very democratic and they said Michael you go and negotiate the deal and that took me a year so I spent a year in uh, uh, in China um, negotiating the deal with the Chinese so you know I, 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 I reflect back and I look at uh, all the traveling I've done and all the people I've met and as I said um, uh, I've, I've been all over the world. Not all of it on business. Susan and I have done our share of traveling. We've taken, uh, I think, 16 cruises, and we went to uh, uh, Antarctica and Brazil. And of course, Susan's family still lives in Europe, so we go back to Europe. We were just there a few months ago. Um, and, you know, we've, uh, we've done our own share of traveling, but, you know, traveling to. Uh, uh, to 89 countries has been uh, very rewarding and very enlightening and people in America should only know how good they have it and 
this is the greatest country, uh, greatest country on earth. Um, we 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 came back in 1995 from China, and uh, we came back to Columbus, Ohio. And by that time, things were changing, and Borden was not doing as well as uh, uh, they had anticipated. And the next thing we knew, Borden got taken over by uh, some venture capitalists. And uh, in one fell swoop, everybody lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. So I had been there since 1979. This is now 1995. It's there 16 years. You know, I've. Uh, I think by this time I had three heart attacks already, and uh, um, uh, and I found myself out of a job. You know, I'm 50 years old. I'm out of a job. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. What do I do? And Susan and I decided that we were going to buy a hearing aid franchise. Uh, the aging of America, and people needed hearing aids, and. Uh, and we found, we went to Belltone and we found one in Toledo, Ohio. And we were in the midst of negotiating. We were just about ready to sign on the bottom line when I got a phone call about a job in Detroit. And I had lived in Detroit back in the uh, 70s. And I said, well, you know, this is a, a company. They uh, were in the automotive field. They have. Um, they're doing a new thing now. The automotive companies don't build seats for their cars. They outsource them. And this company does seating for um, the automotive company on what's called a just-in-time basis. So they call you up in the morning, and you get different contracts. So let's say we have the Mustang contract. They said, well, they're coming down the line, and we need a green leather, and then we need a blue cloth, and then we need that. And we would actually build the seat and have them in order, so when it came down the line, we would just slide it in. And uh, So it was an interesting business. At that time, the business was about $3 billion. It was uh, about 50,000 employees, and they were all over the world, because wherever cars are made, and they were able to get the contract. And they told me they were getting ready to go public with the company, and you know they really wanted me to run their worldwide benefit operations. And you know, having lived overseas, they saw I had international experience. So I said, okay, you know, we'll forget the uh, hearing aid stuff, and I'll go up. And this company was called Lear, L-E-A-R, which at one time was part of Lear Jets and part of a big conglomerate called Leo Siegler, and they spun it off to these three guys, and they said, you know, you're getting in on the ground floor, and we're gonna grow the company. So I went to Lear in 1996 in um, Southfield, Michigan, and the suburbs of Michigan are really good to live in. I mean, it's a lot of nice, nice places, and we, uh, we bought a house in Farmington Hills, and, um, I started with Lear, and um, just to fast forward, uh, over the next 10 years, Lear grew from 3 billion to 18 billion. We went from uh, 50,000 to 120,000 employees, and the stock did famously. We, we started the stock, uh, when I got there, at $15.5 a share, and by the time I left, it was $70 a share. So financially, it was a very uh, worthwhile move. Um, unfortunately, the traveling was brutal. I mean, I, I would be all over the world every week. And uh, they were buying and selling companies. That's how they grew, uh, in addition to getting new business. Um, so um, in 2004, unfortunately, I got very, very ill again and had another heart attack. And this time they said they gotta do another bypass and we can't do it. I was, by that time, we were living in South. I was, I was working in Detroit, we were outside Detroit, but Susan was living in South Carolina. We just, my mother had gotten ill 
And my father had died in 94. My mother got ill and uh, broke her hip. And uh, she came to live with us in Michigan. And uh, I said, you know, I'm going to retire soon. Why don't we just build a house? And we built a house on Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, and I commuted. Susan went down there in 2002. In 2004, I had my fifth heart attack, mm -hmm. and I had to have another triple bypass, and they wound up, um, had my heart attack in Charlotte Airport, actually, and they wound up bringing the company plane down and taking me up to uh, the Cleveland Clinic. And, um, you know, in between that, I had stents put in my arteries and so on and so forth. Um, I went back to work in 2005 after the heart attack. And, uh, by 2006, I, I really had had it. I had plenty of money. I didn't need to work anymore. And uh, uh, Leo offered me the opportunity to retire early and be a consultant for five years. So I said, you know, where do I sign? And um, uh, I left Lear in, in 2005, and uh, I retired, and I started pulling out my hair. I didn't like it. I didn't have enough to do. Um, I lived down now in South Carolina. There was no racetracks. There was no casinos. There was... Uh, it was a beautiful place, Hilton Head is a beautiful place, but the other problem was <coughs> that hospitals were uh, just not adequate. And, um, uh, but I, 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 I sucked it up and I stayed there and uh, in 2009 a company approached me and offered me a two year assignment. Uh, it was a company out of Grand Rapids, Michigan called Amway. And they said, uh, we'd like you to come and work for us for two years, and we'd like you to redo all of our benefit programs and renegotiate all of the uh, insured arrangements with all the insurance companies, and, you know, we'd like you to go all over the world for us, and we'll give you a two-year contract. And I said, I'll take it. And a week before I started with Amways, we, we uh, wound up selling our house on Hilton Head and buying another one which Susan uh, wound up uh, renovating. That's what Susan does, she renovates houses. Um, yeah. um, so I went, I was there for two years, uh, from 2009 to 2011, and I got back, and I think I was back about three weeks, and I said to Susan, I, I want to move. I don't want to be here anymore. I need to move to a city that has um, a larger Jewish population. I need to move to a city that has a tier one hospital. And we wound up moving to Tampa, Florida. Uh, I moved by myself. Susan had to sell the house. We had a, quite a large house there. And it took her uh, two plus years to sell the house. Um, a house here in South uh, South Tampa, which uh, Susan was a little too happy to start renovating, and uh, still not finished. <laughs> uh, it's like a finished, finished. Um, I like I love Tampa. Um, I like the fact that it has uh, professional sports teams. I'm a huge baseball fan back from the days when I lived in the shadow of Ebbets Field in Brooklyn. Um, I go to a lot of baseball games. I, I participate in fantasy baseball. Um, I, I go to spring training every year. Even before I lived in Florida, I, I go with a group of guys uh, every year to spring training. Um, I do make a number of trips out to Las Vegas. I, I like to play poker. I play poker here. But I really, really um, enjoy Tampa um, very much. And uh, Susan enjoys it. Um, we like our life here. One of the reasons I came here is because of Tampa General Hospital. So 
always somebody in the room that works or knows people at Tampa General. Uh, I am on the transplant list for New Heart, but unfortunately, being over 70 years old, uh, Medicare does not want to give me one. So uh, I guess I have to change my name to Dick Cheney in order to get a heart, <laughs> being over 70. Uh, but I'm doing okay. I've lost a lot of weight. I, I eat better. I, I've become a vegetarian over the last 15 months. Or 15 months ago, Susan has also followed in my footsteps and became a vegetarian. Um, so, you know, um, it's not easy, but um, we have a lot of friends here and they guess, tolerate our eating habits. Um, but when we go out, we always are able to find things to eat. So, you know, I really believe that I've had a, um, uh, a great journey from my uh, one-bedroom apartment where I shared the bedroom with my sister Linda uh, to uh, now living on Bayshore Boulevard in Tampa, Florida. Um, I feel that uh, uh, Tampa has really been wonderful for Susan and I. Um, I have, I have two daughters by a previous marriage. One of my daughters is extremely religious. All of my grandchildren went to yeshiva. My uh, oldest grandson lives in Israel, is starting to be an Orthodox rabbi. My son-in-law is uh, Boyle in Columbus, Ohio. Um, being Jewish is um, uh, extremely important to me and to Susan. Um, <clears throat> we love the holidays, we love the food, and uh, most of all, um, uh, we love our Chavara, we love the people in the Chavara who have opened their arms to us, and uh, uh, we enjoy uh, com coming to Kol Um I enjoy telling you my story. Susan and I actually have to do a new business, um, and uh, we're starting, starting to market it. It's uh, it's it's somewhat com complex to explain, but it's like a big uh, it's like a big cell phone. It's uh, called Floridian Selfie. It's almost like the old photo booths without a booth, and. Um, yeah, so it's something that, that's going to be our next venture in life, uh, and, um, and, and that's been my journey. I, I, really, uh, I really feel blessed to be in the position that I'm in today. I feel blessed to have uh, met so many interesting people over my career. Uh, I feel blessed to have visited 89 countries. There, most people can't even name 89 countries. This is—I've uh, been on every continent: Africa to Antarctica to uh, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, South America. Uh, I mean, there's there's almost no place where we haven't been, and we continue to travel. And. Uh, uh, I don't know how much longer we'll be able to do that, but you know, right now I, I feel pretty good, and uh, um, and we just plan to do whatever we want to do within reason going forward. So that's who I am. Um, anybody wants to ask me any questions? That's great. If you don't have any questions, I understand because I did such a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the one thing I do want to mention is, you know, having worked for uh, Don Rumsfeld and um, uh, back in the uh, 90s, I did get involved with the Washington scene because of my expertise in the benefits arena. And I was on uh, Clinton's task force that wrote the uh, HIPAA law, uh, the uh, COBRA law, and I was on Bush's task force in 2000. Uh, and uh, uh, two that wrote the HIPAA that did the HIPAA legislation. So you know, I have given back to the community. As soon as I retired in 2005, I was asked to be on the board of Alzheimer's for South Carolina, 
and I had stayed on their board for three years. I was instrumental in buying a new building for them and negotiating the building. And, um, you know, I, I have a lot of experience in uh, uh, the corporate world, and, um, you know, I stand ready if I'm asked again to do things, uh, to evaluate them, and we don't mind giving back to the community. That's it. Forty minutes, Sharon. Very good. <laughs> Perfect.